The first one is the big picture rule. The big picture rule is while we're going to have some fun tonight and have a good time, we got to remember that we're in control of a live firearm. We are holding a real gun, a real firearm. It's not a toy. And so if we don't use it correctly or use it unsafely, it could potentially hurt ourselves or someone else. And we don't want that to happen. Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Okay, you're going to take that. The United States of America is the most heavily armed country in the world. With 310 million privately owned rifles, pistols, and assault guns in circulation, the average is one weapon for every man, woman, and child. There we go. Okay, you're going to come back with your hand, with that one finger, that trigger finger, you're going to grab that, you're going to pull it to the rear, and then let it go. Go ahead. Nope, a little harder. I can do it for you if you want to. Pull, 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 pull. Oh, well fun. There we go. Now we're good. Okay, but go ahead and put your face here anyway. I just want you to look down the rifle and see your... Every year, 30,000 Americans, 18,000 of them youngsters, are shot dead. Some of the shootings are covered by the media, but the majority, mostly domestic accidents, are not. Nice. That was a good one. We know that every half hour, a child is killed or injured in the United States from guns. Guns are the second leading cause of death for American youth, and they're the leading cause of death for African-American youth. This is insane. Detroit is largely a city in ruins, with one of the highest crime rates in the United States. Here in Detroit, this is a situation that was all too common. You get houses that are abandoned or burnt down, and apparently it's, it's too much political headache to tear them down, so they leave them up. And it's kind of sad because right next to them you have houses that are actually people are living in, and, and across the street you have nicer houses, but every block has houses like this that is a breeding ground sometimes for, you know, danger, people lurking in their squatters. It's just something that happens and that's why people like me, I've chosen to arm myself and protect myself and protect my family. And I don't see it, you know, I don't see an issue with that and there's a lot of people that don't. Anthony Cole has lived here all his life and owns six pharmacies. The staff carries weapons and work behind bulletproof glass. More guns are hidden in the numerous false shelves. Like many Americans, Anthony unconditionally supports the Second Amendment of the Constitution, a few lines written in the late 18th century that guarantee every citizen's right to self-defense and the freedom to bear arms. that there's nothing uh... At age three, Dahlia, his daughter, was given a rifle as a present. Two years later, her father continues to teach her and her young cousin okay. the basic safety rules. That's funny. Just this piece. What is that? This is Dahlia's gun. What did we talk about? What happens if you see a gun laying around? What do you do? Tell anybody, do you touch it? No. If it's purple, does that mean it's a toy? No. No, it could still be real, right? Jojo, a purple gun can still be real. Okay. This is Dahlia's gun. This, and it's purple, but it's real. This is why you never go by the color of the gun, okay? So, the first thing is you never point it at anybody. That's not fun, okay? So if you're holding this in your hand, you never, ever, ever point it at anybody, okay? Because then you only point it at things you want to shoot, and you don't want to shoot people, right? Do you want that to happen? No. I don't. Me either. That's right. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't want to shoot my mommy because I don't want to my mommy. Exactly, you don't want something bad to happen. So that's why I'm teaching you what's safe and what's not safe, okay? This is how you're going to shoot. You're going to line up 
This part goes in your shoulder, right? Yeah. Should your finger be on the trigger? No. No. So you're just gonna grab right here. And then you're gonna put your other arm here. Yeah. And then you're gonna put your cheek right here and look. And that's all I want you to do. I just want you to grab right here, okay? Um. And this part's gonna go right here, okay? Where's that go? Yes, where's this go? Yes, where's your cheek go? Where's your eyes go? Yes. It's hard to see the front side, but you'll be looking through there, okay? Is that comfortable with your, with your feet up like that? <laughs> you got it? You good? Okay, get up. You can get up. Given the increasing number of accidents, some associations are taking action. The Brady campaign is one of the oldest and most powerful lobbies against weapons in the United States. Its president, Dan Gross, works with Barack Obama to limit the circulation of firearms in society. We need to start a real conversation about the risks of guns in the home. Um, and uh, one of those really striking risks is the risks to kids. Nine kids in our country are um, shot unintentionally, accidentally, every single day. Um, hundreds take their own lives every year. Um, we see school shootings happen with such frequency. Um, the overwhelming majority of all of those tragedies, and every one of those is a tragedy, whether they take their own life, it's unintentional, or it's a school shooting, um, happens with parents' guns. Guns that parents bring into the home, um, largely with the idea that it makes a home safer. Oksana Domkin and her husband lost their 12-year-old son Nicholas in December 2010. He was shot and killed just before Christmas by a child of the same age who used his father's weapon, a loaded 9mm handgun he'd found in the drawer of a bedside table. He pointed at Nicholas as if it was a game. The bullet hit him in the head. He just said, I don't know how to tell you this. And to tell me what? And um, he said, um, Nicholas was shot when I arrived there um, a few minutes after that, a, doc a neurologist, a doctor came out and he said that they ran some tests and that Nicholas had no brain activity. Nicholas's death on December the 23rd, 2010, became a major talking point. A bill now bears Nicholas's name. Here in New York State, we have a bill currently before the state legislature called Nicholas's Law. Now, Nicholas's Law would require gun owners to store their guns safely and securely in a locked gun safe um, at all times when they're not using that gun. There is no way I'm going to let my, my son die in vain. What we're trying to enforce here is um, safety, especially because of the children, because children are curious. Little ones, big ones, um, they're going to find that gun, no matter where you put it. They are going to find it. Uh, and thinking that it won't happen to you is just, I think it's just plain stupid. 
Despite all the tragedies, most American people continue to believe that owning a gun is a guarantee of security. The States United, of which we're a member, decided to do a public service announcement, a video, an educational um, message to Americans about the dangers of a gun in the home. And the reason we wanted to do this is last December there was a Gallup national poll and also one done by Pew Research showing that more Americans for the first time ever now believe that having a gun provides more protection than not. With the support of the victims' families, some associations are taking increasingly bold action. In New York, where the possession of firearms is now forbidden, an unusual shop opened for business in March 2015. So we decided to try to get this message across by illustrating people coming into a, a, a fake gun store, they didn't know it was fake, um, actually in the market to own a gun, thinking a gun would provide protection, self-defense. They had bought into this myth that the National Rifle Association has been uh, perpetrating. The first gun I showed her was this revolver. It's the easiest gun we have to use. It's, uh, you know, it's our most popular one. It's a 22 caliber, six inch revolver. It's also a gun that a five-year-old found in his parents' bedroom, went down and shot his nine-month-old baby brother with it. This is a nine millimeter semi-automatic. It's a very handy gun. It's easy to use, carry it in a purse like that gal from the Walmart. Two-year-old son, reaches into her pocketbook, pulls it out, shoots her. They thought, ironically, that they were protecting their nine-month-old. She thought she was protecting her two-year-old. Every gun had a tag and a unique history. And so this caught the prospective gun buyer by surprise and it got them to think about the wisdom of owning a gun. And most of them, in fact all of them, went away saying they would reconsider buying a gun or not buy one at all because they no longer saw it as a way to protect them. It is one of our rights, but my opinion has definitely changed. I don't, I don't feel safe with the gun. I was pretty blindsided by just the entire history of every gun in the store. And it made me actually think I'm not going to buy that gun. You're not a bad person if you bring a gun into your home um, with the idea of protecting your family. You're just misinformed um, because that gun does not actually make your family safer. Um, that gun is 42 times more likely to be used to take the life of a member of that household than of an intruder. Remember, we're gonna aim for that bottle over there. We're just gonna shoot in this direction, okay? I just want you to get used to it and see how it goes. I can't gonna... do it. Yeah, that's what huh? I can't do it. Got you. You're looking through here? Okay. Mm. Okay? Uh, Don't worry about getting in the middle right now. We just wanna see how it feels when you're taking that first yeah. shot right okay? now. I'll tell you what. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be an expert. Huh? Five years old over here, as a matter of fact. Okay? We're gonna just see how it feels. More than enough. Put it in your shoulder. That's it. She won, she won, That's she it. Lottery ticket. See? Okay. Every year's That's it. Now you're going to do it, okay? Squeeze the trigger. That's it. You shot. Go down there. Oh, yeah. she's Squeeze it from kid. there. She's my kid. I, we can tell. She's Squeeze. a shooter. Oh, yeah. I Perfect. I know exactly where you're going. Morning. You're going straight onto the hill. On Thursday Go. Early. Perfect. On Same spot. It's about an eight and a half hour ride according to Google Same Maps. spot. 12 miles. You only need one. Same time. You ten shot times. 10 times. <laughs> I know you do. You ready to do it again? Let's one, load you up man. again. The first time she shot, she started crying, but it wasn't because she was scared. It was because she was she didn't have a target to shoot at. She was kind of nervous. She just finished her second magazine and she she said, okay, I want to do it again. So this is definitely something she likes, so I'm proud and I'm happy. Yeah, it kicks pretty good. Okay, I've had enough. <laughs> 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 
Where Anthony Cole lives in Michigan, they're so convinced that to live in safety, one has to own a gun, they're training their children to defend themselves at a very young age. Pay attention. That's it. Did you like that one? Or do you like the rifle better? I like the rifle better. Yeah. You like the rifle? Why? Like the rifle better. Because it's bigger. Keep those on. To scare off potential attackers, Anthony carries a weapon visibly on his belt. In the United States, this is called an open carry. It's accepted in most public places and in most states. To its supporters, it's a basic freedom. You never know. It's like wearing your seat belt. I don't want to be in an accident, but if I'm in an accident, I wear my seatbelt to help save me. If I have a fire extinguisher. I don't want to use it because that means there's a fire. How much insurance policy? But it's nice to have that fire extinguisher to put that fire out if it happens. Just, just in case. Might be rare, but it does happen. So you never know. It's a protection. The saying is it's always better to have the gun and not use it than to not have it and need, and it. need to use it. Brian Jeffs is the mastermind behind the Michigan open carry movement. To teach the very young the virtues of self-defense, he wrote a children's book, which explains how good American citizens can defend themselves from the so-called bad guys. We found that there weren't any kids' books available that were really pro-gun. It was natural that we thought, hey, let's do a kid's book about open carry. We'll talk about gun safety. We can talk about the Second Amendment. We can talk about your right to self-defense and stuff like that. And so we came up with this book um, for kids. Dad would say, Brenna, there is evil in this world, and we want to protect you the best we can. Mom would add, we are responsible for our own safety. And as an adult, someday you will be responsible for your safety as well as your family. They both like to say, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. It's a kid's book, it's pro-gun. Anytime people talk about guns and kids, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, it's just somehow psychologically it's not right. And I think it's ignorance on, on those people's part because I don't think they understand how important it is to, to educate kids on firearms because they are everywhere in this country. Surprisingly, the one place where possession is absolutely forbidden is behind the wheel. Sherry Mason lives only a few dozen kilometers away. She's a retired professor and fiercely opposes open carry and is the leader of an activist movement to control gun possession in the United States. You're welcome. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, it's, and that one was a difficult meeting to go to because you had to be face to face with a bunch of men carrying guns. Yes. How many of them? About 40? 40. Oh my so, God. I mean, one parent did come and he said, you guys said you're not here to intimidate, but when I drove in the parking lot, I saw you guys getting out of your cars and I drove to another parking lot to park. I'm intimidated. Why wouldn't I be? You know, right. in terms of what we're going to do um, in the future, if there was a way we could keep tabs on the Michigan open carry and where they're going to go next, what are they going to hit next? <laughs> it just seems ridiculous to teach our children to um, trust a stranger with a gun in order to protect you from a stranger with a gun. I, I don't understand it. I can't do that myself. So you know. I'd be happy to volunteer to be the, the little, Facebook page uh, informal. Watcher. All right. Okay. <laughs> Michigan Open Carry Watchdog. Okay, okay. Sherry, <laughs> right. You can be the lurker. Along with several other mothers in Michigan, they started their resistance campaign 15 years ago, after the death of 60-year-old Kyla Rowland, who was shot by her classmate in their school playground. But 
a few weeks after Kayla's death on Mother's Day 2000, Sherry and 750,000 other Americans demonstrated in Washington against violence and U.S. gun culture. This first large-scale mobilization is something many remember very well. It was bright blue sunny sky. It was Mother's Day. And I'll never forget the signs because the signs people were carrying were um, photographs of children that uh, they were marching in honor of who had died. And this was just something that just was amazing to me. Every week, these mothers try to raise awareness near where they live. Today, they're in a Kroger supermarket. The sign allows clients to do their shopping armed to the teeth. We're uh, asking Kroger to stop allowing open carry guns in their stores. Okay. And if you support that viewpoint, we'd appreciate if you gave corporate headquarters an email or a phone call saying, you don't want to shop where guns are allowed to be openly carried. Okay. Thanks. In my heart, I believe that most people <laughs> agree this is common sense. You know, why would we want guns in a grocery store, you know? So I think it's, um, it's good. Good for us to be there. We uh, have a no solicitation policy. You're welcome to stand on the sidewalk, but you can't be in front of the store. Okay? Uh, is that a, oh, you have a no solicitation we, policy, we but not do. a no gun policy. We, that's interesting. <laughs> that's, that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, but no, we, ask, uh, irrelevant. we ask that you not do that. I'll be honest with you, um, it is hard to stay engaged and to really stay motivated um, in this cause, in this issue, because um, for a lot of reasons, we see so few um, victories <laughs> and uh, it does feel overwhelming because, you know, we're just we're just moms and grandmas and women who just care about the safety of children. And that's what keeps us going, to answer your question question. And it's hard. It's hard to keep organized, but, you know, we, we do it <laughs> quite a while. The mothers of Michigan are not alone. <laughs> After three years, the association Mums Demand Action for Gun Sense in America raises money and organizes high-profile campaigns, which have been widely praised by the media. There's a group called Moms Demand uh, Action for Gun Sense. Uh, they're for gun control, uh, and Mike Bloomberg supports this group. So here are three of the ads that they're running. Uh, as you can see here, one of them isn't welcome at Kroger. Guess which one? Can you imagine you got your kid there and they throw you out because she's eating ice cream, but they will let her walk next to that guy holding an assault rifle? Insanity. At Walmart, the largest supermarket chain in the United States, guns are openly displayed on the shelves amongst the toys and camping equipment. There are even rifles for children, colored purple or pink, but these are not playthings. Yeah, yeah, they're here. The weapons market in the United States is worth $7 billion a year, and the fashion is guns for children. In the space of two decades, cricket sales have practically multiplied by 20. 60,000 mini rifles are sold each year. For the children. Mm -hmm. For children, yeah, for the children, yeah. In the southern United States, Tim Guy organizes classes for children under the auspices of the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Manufacturers use the issue of security to win parents' approval. Y'all want to shoot some lasers? Yeah! All right, I'm going to set it up. Good job. Nice. This has been such fun. Good job. There you go. There you go. Very good. Next one. Keep going. So what's the first thing would somebody you think you would do if you saw a gun laying somewhere? Would you pick it up? Yeah. What do you think? No. no. Don't pick no guns up, do we? No. no. First thing you see, you stop. You see a gun laying somewhere, you stop. Now, stop. Stop. Then the next one is don't touch. So do this. Don't touch. Stop. Don't, don't touch. touch. Leave the area. Tell them to go. 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 Don't zip me 
up yet, remember, I gotta put my feet on. Do we have the big poster of... It's, it's on that table with the guns. Stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. <laughs> Deputy Dog. Hey, kids. I hear y'all been doing some gun stuff. Stop. Don't touch. Leave the area. Tell them no. Good. You have to educate children. You got to tell them. You got to explain to them, okay, why is this dangerous? What can happen? I need them to understand this thing goes off. There's no what we call gimme backs. You can't get the bullet back. You know, kids have video games nowadays. They make a mistake, they push a reset button, they get to start over. Well, there's not one here. Well, instead of trying to scare the children into saying, don't touch this gun or else, well, let's explain to them why, what can go wrong. Can you tell me which one is a fake and which one is a toy? You think that's real or you think it's a toy? Toy. Ah, I've shot that gun before. Here's the thing, they're all considered real. They're all, you don't mess with any of these guns because you see, you really don't know. This one's real, this one's real, this one's real. All right, where's that finger supposed to be? There you go. The gun's pointed down like that. That's an AR-15. It's finger. always the same speech. If you find a weapon, don't touch it. However, in these classes, it's easy to get your hands on an assault rifle. Looks like a rifle, doesn't it? Yeah, I got shot. You see? What do you think? Every spring, the NRA organizes a large fair. It's a mixture of well-behaved children and a giant armory. This year it was in Nashville, the capital of country music. 500 stands display the most sophisticated of American artillery. Over four days in this festive atmosphere, more than 80,000 people will come to admire and purchase deadly weapons. The Curran family believes in the American Holy Trinity, God, the Constitution, and firearms. They're here to help celebrate their daughter's 18th birthday by giving her her birthday wish, a revolver. Well, I've been practically begging for a revolver for about a year and a half now, so maybe I can get one. If I'm big enough. That is huge. <laughs> I really like this one. I picked this one up twice. Oh, I like that one too. Look at that. <laughs> it's attached, okay? I like it. It's definitely heavy. I bet it has a kick. The white. Okay, explain to me what's up with So it does, just slides in here like this, hooks over your belt like that, and then your shirt comes over the top of it. That is really cool. I need it. I like, I really... I don't want it. need it? Yes. Need it? Need mm -hmm. it. I don't want it. I need it. Well, I really like that. That was actually pretty cool. I've never seen that before. It'd be really easy to get on you and get out real quick. I don't know. I've never, like seen that I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I've seen a lot of guns, so. A T25 Torx bed. That's it. Our philosophy is, you know, we've raised our children around guns. Um, so they wouldn't be curious, um, so they wouldn't be likely to pick up a weapon and, and try to play with it as a toy. 
Um, and I think I think it's absolutely worked in our case, and I was raised that way as well. So, um, you know, I think it's really just education and just making them understand it can be fun. I mean, and you can be safe and have a good time. Amongst the stands, these conferences gather firearm enthusiasts and curious citizens. On the platform, Rob Pincus is one of the most famous pro-gun lobbyists in the country. The audience he's addressing is already convinced that the Second Amendment is the only protection against aggression, even when the country is not at war. We're not talking about hunting heritage and firearms tradition. The Second Amendment isn't written for people to go hunting. The Second Amendment isn't written for people to go sports shooting. It's there so that we can defend our way of life, and ultimately that means defending our life, defending our family. And if that's the primary reason you own firearms, give me, that, give me your hand up in the air again. The primary reason you own firearms, personal defense, self-defense, home defense, defense of others. Keep them up, keep them up. If you own more than five guns, keep your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the strongest point is that the responsibility to fight evil, to, and that sounds a little melodramatic, but the responsibility to be prepared to defend yourself is an incredibly important part of our society. When people stop defending themselves, evil increases. When people stop being prepared to fight, we know if I could snap my fingers and make evil go away, I would do that. I don't know how to do that. So I teach people to be prepared to fight evil when evil shows up. And I truly believe that our world would be a better place if we taught kids self-defense early on. We taught kids not to rely on the hero. Don't run to the teacher. Don't tell the policeman. Be prepared to fight because it might need to be you that stops the bad guy. We'd have less abuse against women. We'd have less abuse against children. Guns are part of our world and we have to educate kids about them. The law in the United States allows citizens to buy weapons at 18 or even 14 in some southern states for certain types of guns, with no background checks for judicial or psychiatric history. To go to a gun show and be able to purchase a gun, or even be able to purchase it from another individual outside of a gun show in a private sale without a background check is um, it's just a reality. It can be done. And um, so that, uh, you know, creates a landscape of potential, the people who shouldn't be getting guns, getting guns, pe people with mental illnesses, people with um, uh, criminal records, um, you know, that gives them access to guns. And it's precisely these kinds of checks the anti-gun groups want to see made mandatory. In 2013, Barack Obama, supported by 73% of the public, tried to pass a law to that effect, but failed. It was blocked in Congress by the gun manufacturer's lobby. I mean, to put it most basically, we need the voice of the American public, the overwhelming majority of Americans who just want to live in a safer nation, to be heard over the political influence of the corporate gun lobby. You know, right now there's a huge disconnect between what the American public wants, what's in our best interest, what will actually save lives and keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people, and what our elected leaders, the people that we've sent to Washington, D.C. and to state capitals to represent us, are actually doing about it. And that's, um, it's shameful that that's the way uh, our political system works. And it's tragic because people are dying as a result. Good afternoon, Nashville. My name is Shannon Watts, and I'm the founder of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. On the sidelines of the NRA Congress, a Victims Association organizes a demonstration. Mums Demand Action was set up in 2012, after the Sandy Hook massacre in Connecticut, when 30 people, mostly children, were shot dead. Its two million members support gun control law. Together with Every Town for Gun Safety, we said we'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the gun lobby, and that's why we're here today. <laughs> Together, we are shining a spotlight on extremist policies that the gun lobby used to pass in the dark. The gun lobby is worried about losing their profits and their influence, but guess what we're worried about? We're worried about losing our children. Who do you guys think are going to win? Shannon Watts has invited relatives of the victims to speak. 
voices and tears against firearms. Less than a year ago, my son, Christopher Ross Michaels Martinez, was shot and killed in Isla Vista. He was another casualty of the daily carnage in our schools, homes, towns, and cities. Today, it can happen at any time, any place, to anyone in America. I support the Second Amendment. I am not anti-gun. I'm anti-gun violence. The Curran family lives in Murfreesboro, in Tennessee. It's a small, quiet town. Still, their home boasts an impressive arsenal. This is the master bedroom. This is me and my wife. And the safe stays in the back of my closet. And then there's another one on top of that as well. Uh, we al I always do keep one loaded firearm out at all times for home defense. Other than that, everything stays in the safe. So if your daughters, for example, want to shoot. <laughs> they have to come to me. No one can get in that safe but me. E even my wife doesn't have a key to it. <laughs> yes, we are scared of nothing. This was my first AK. This is my father's that uh, after he passed became mine. My favorite's probably, probably the Beretta. I really like the Beretta. I like the Ruger too. Um, but I also love the AK. It's one of my favorites too, so. Um, I like this one too though but I really like this one. If you go to a bar and you have too much to drink and you're in an accident, we don't ban Budweiser. If, if you- Or the car. Or the, or the car. If someone goes out and purchases a Corvette and drives it recklessly, we don't ban Chevrolet. You know, it, but for some reason, if someone illegally obtains a firearm and commits an illegal act with it, it's the gun that's the problem. It's not the gun that's the problem, it was the person that's the problem. It takes a bad person to make a gun do bad things. The gun cannot physically get up and do a bad thing on its own. We are gonna go about 35 minutes to a little bitty town called Woodbury. It is a private range. We can do some close-up shooting with handguns. We can do some long distance shooting with the rifles. And uh, we're gonna make some noise. The weapons are not only there for protection. Shooting is also a Curran family pastime, a moment of relaxation both parents and teenage daughters enjoy. Where should I stand? As far back as you want. I want you to try it a little bit faster, okay? One hand? That's what it's for. Oh, Jesus. One hand, let go of it. Put your left arm down. That's what it's made for. <laughs> Two, 
one, go! As parents, we do everything we can to keep our children safe. It's now time for us to assume responsibility for our schools. The only way, the only way to stop a monster from killing our kids is to be personally involved and invested in a plan of absolute protection. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. You know, what Wayne LaPierre did was a week out of an unthinkably horrific tragedy that rocked our nation to the core, um, gave a press conference and said that we, the answer was arming teachers and putting more guns in school. Um, he knew he wasn't right. He didn't care if he was right. He knew people were gonna call him crazy. Uh, but the goal was just to distract from the very real things that we can do to keep guns out of dangerous hands. But far from cooling support for self-defense advocates, dramas like Sandy Hook result in increased gun sales throughout the country. It seems to be a competition to see who will be the best armed to respond to the next attack. Now, when you have a determined killer who has chosen to go after kids in a school, and you're going to just simply say, well, let the police handle it. I think you're being naive. We're not gonna tell every teacher you need to have a gun, it's ridiculous. But the teachers that choose to be armed when they're away from school, former military, former law enforcement or well-trained civilians, and now they're in the school with, with the most precious asset any society has, our children, how could, why are we telling them they're not allowed to be capable of defending themselves when they're in that environment? Doesn't make any sense to me. Local firearms instructor Johnny Price appalled by the Newtown massacre, came up with his own plan. Free gun classes for teachers down in a school canteen. How many of you guys are teachers, staff, all that stuff? Raise your hands, teachers and staff. There we go, which is the majority of everybody in. But could an armed teacher take out a shooter with a semi-automatic weapon and prevent another massacre? What I do think is important is that we teach kids something other than hide and hope. So we started a program called School Attacker Response Course. The School Attacker Response Course was designed to give kids empowerment, to teach them to get away. Nobody told you you had to stay in the corner. Get open the windows and jump out. So evade was the first thing we taught. Barricade was the next thing. We started working with you. That's step two. Step three, respond if necessary. You know, if, if you are confronted by the bad guy, it's too late to run. He, you, you, didn't, you weren't able to barricade, now fight. Pencils, pens, scissors, books, well, even defensive in the fight moment. Wear your books in your backpack backwards because books can stop bullets. We've demonstrated the tests. We have the videos online. We've shown people. Your books can stop bullets. Kids can stop bad guys. Swarm. Put, give me six 10-year-olds hanging off a guy with a rifle. That guy's not able to use the rifle efficiently. Manufacturers can smell a deal and are competing to help schools defend themselves. Just after Sandy Hook, George Tunis, a protections manufacturer for the police and the army, started to produce bulletproof items, especially for schools, using an ultra-strong fiber. We started to make shields for, for SWAT teams, lightweight shields that could be used for police officers that they can actually use in the event of a, a riot or a difficult bust or a border interdiction. Unfortunately, the Sandy Hook incident happened and we realized that if the armor wasn't inside the school at the beginning of the incident, it wasn't going to get there in time. And that really led to the evolution of the bulletproof whiteboard. In this case, this one happens to be blue, um, but it was a product that was designed to go into schools, um, be something you can teach with, much like an artist's uh, palette, but two hands, and this thing becomes both a defensive and an offensive weapon. Someone holding a gun with one hand, with his hand in the trigger, if I hit you with this, the first thing that'll happen is the gun will go up, down, sideways, but it won't be pointed at you anymore. In this case, here's a, a whiteboard that was shot up. This is nine millimeter rounds. This was 30 rounds shot into this whiteboard. 
it stops all of them. And they're all, they're all inside. We sell a number of backpack inserts. And the most important thing is they can just go inside your backpack. And now that is essentially a piece of bulletproof armor. So if it was, if it was on my back, I'm protected. And we do train kids, 12 and up, to be able to handle this and use this as a piece of armor and keep it over their vital organ. George Tunis is in Berlin, a peaceful town in Maryland, to visit one of the first bulletproofed schools in the country. His two sons study here. Here, the doors are all reinforced with the indestructible fiber and so are the desks in the classroom. You know, staff is here almost every day. They're right here doing the mail. And so if someone comes through the door, this is going to be one of the places that you want to be able to deal with that particular threat. I'm the guy who's not crazy about cameras stuck in my face. I talked to our teachers, and they were a little concerned in the beginning. Uh, they were afraid that, you know, are we going to be uh, in ch charge of trying to stop an intruder if they get into the school? But, uh, but we thought that still, they still had value. So uh, George Tunis, within two weeks, had brought over enough bulletproof whiteboards that equipped every classroom in our school and enough clipboards for every office in our school. I've been in the school for 45 years since we founded it in 1970. And if you had asked me then, or 25 years ago, or maybe even 10 years ago, that we would ever have the need to lock our doors, put cameras on the doors, and to protect our students, uh, I would have probably laughed. Uh, I don't laugh anymore. It can happen anywhere. And so I feel that anything we can do that would give that one extra level and, uh, of protection, or that will sort of buy us a few seconds, maybe, maybe buy us a half a minute until authorities can arrive. The Sandy Hook massacre outraged many in America. So far in 2015, over 350 serious shooting incidents have taken place throughout the country. Firearm sales have never been higher though, and all attempts to control the owners have failed. With over $7 billion in annual sales, the gun lobby keeps a firm grip on how Congress votes. The Second Amendment seems untouchable. Citizen groups are becoming increasingly vocal, but have made little real impact. They now await the president, who they hope will find a way around the lobbies and put an end to the roll call of shooting victims. Charlotte, Daniel, Olivia, Josephine, Anna, Dylan, Madeline, Catherine, Chase, Jesse, James, Grace, Emily, Jack, Noah, Caroline, Jessica, Benjamin, Abigail, Allison. God has called them all home. For those of us who remain, let us find the strength to carry on and make our country worthy of their memory. <laughs>